everybody, this is Jen. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the four different common types of soap that uh, can be made right here on the homestead. And we're going to go through those today and I will show you the differences right here on Garden Jen's Journey. Okay, so I'm going to show you the four most common soaps that uh, are handmade um, detergent, like your laundry detergent and things, that's in a different classification. We're talking about basically um, hand soaps and uh, bath and body soaps, those kinds of things. Right here in this container I have a lye water because I'm actually going to be making a batch of soap today. And I'll be sharing that on a different video, so make sure that you're uh, staying tuned for that. So, for soap, uh, there is two main ingredients. You have your oil, and then you have lye. And this is uh, some lye that I get from uh, Essential Depot. There's quite a few different carriers for soap makers of, of lye. But there's also two different types of lye. This one, set that down, this one is sodium hydroxide, and this is what is used to make hard bars of soap. You need the sodium hydroxide to make bars. If you're making a liquid soap, like a liquid hand soap, you need a completely different lye, and that's this one. This is potassium hydroxide, completely different, um, but still the, the recipe is basically the same. It's oil and lye. Now you'll hear people talk about that uh, they want to use glycerin soap, soap that you don't have to have the lye in it. And um, unfortunately that's a big myth. In order to get soap of any kind, whether you're doing bar soap or whether you're doing liquid soap, you have to have lye. The oil and the lye react together in a process called saponification. That's where the word soap comes from. So you have to have lye. But if you don't want to mess with the dangerous chemical, you can buy pre-made soap. And that is what is called the glycerin soap. It's already pre-made. So you don't have to deal with the chemical uh, components. So this is just a simple um, melt and pour soap that I get uh, to make some different things. But it's already pre-made. All I have to do with this is uh, simply open it up. And then you can see the, see the soap bubbles there. And then just cut it up into whatever size I need. Melt it down. Add some uh, colorants, whatever fragrance I want. Put it in a mold and let it harden back up. That's the easiest way for people to get into soap making without having to deal with the chemical components. I'll show you an example of that. Okay, so this is my melt and pour soap. I have it sealed because I live in a very humid area and it sweats a lot, so I keep it sealed. But uh, I melted it down, I added my green coloration, I actually put in some loofahs in there, and I just let it harden back up in the mold and now I have uh, bars of soap. And melt and pour soaps usually the kind of soap that's used uh, when they're making intricate molded soap. Um, it's the melt and pour because of how smooth and easy it runs into those crevices of the different designs. So that's usually what you use for your intricate, so intricate soaps. The kind that I generally make is called cold process soap. And uh, it's kind of interesting because the lye and the soap actually heat up when you're making it. But it's different than hot process soap because in hot process soap you actually add more heat. You actually cook it. But today I'm making cold process soap. And what that allows you to do is get intricate designs um, when you're doing uh, different colors in your soap. Uh, the, cold, the melt and pour is a little bit trickier to do. 
for intricate designs with colors, but uh, that's where the cold process soap comes in. So this is just one that I do. Um, you can do ones that have all sorts of swirls in them. I don't have an example right now. I'll put a picture in of some of the other ones I do. Um, but yeah, that's the cold process kind. And then the hot process, like I said, you add additional heat. Um, this takes four to six weeks after you get it all poured to harden and cure and be ready to use. So this takes a while. Hot process soap you can use within 24 hours. So there's a time saver. Same with the melt and pour soap. As soon as it's hardened, you can use it. Um, so this is an example of the hot process soap. You can see it's the, the color is kind of really muted and then the texture, it's a really, really harsh texture. But this soap is ready to use right away. That's what's good about the hot process soap. But again, all four soaps, same ingredients, oil and lye. And then you add your colors and fragrances as you like. So I hope that helps you understand the four different varieties of soap. And when you hear glycerin soap, it actually still has lye in it. It's just uh, you don't have to deal with that part. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope wherever you are that you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.